So we're going to take questions. Uh, if you can make, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Hala had to leave because she is traveling. To, uh, she had a lot of commitment. So if you have any question, could you please uh, 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 introduce yourself and make your question as precise as possible and to whom is speaker you are addressing the question? Hi, I'm from East London slash Essex. I'm Jamila. Most people know me as Michelle. Um, for this young lady, I'm not sure of your name. Can you say your uh, name? Farida. 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 Okay. Um, you do mentoring, but do you do it for anyone? Is it specific for academia mm. and anyone? anyone? Mm. Most of the people who contact me are in... Uh, Academia, okay. uh, a lot, I would say mainly, are struggling within the healthcare system um, with uh, promotion and trying to find a way to navigate a really difficult uh, horizon. Or well, sometimes it's about making choices and just giving people the ability to talk through what they actually know they want to do. Um, and I think it's really quite important for women to be doing that for other women. I do it for men as well. Okay. I have almost as many men that come, but mainly women. Okay. And where are you based? I'm based at Queen Mary's. Okay. Do you know the London uh, site? I think so. Yeah. Mile End? Mile End, yes. No, not I'm not at the Mile End. End. I'm at the Whitechapel site. Whitechapel. You know where the main hospital is? Yes. Uh, behind there, there's a big glass building, which is the research building. That's where I'm based. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, uh, who is next? Who is this? Okay. Good morning. Thank you for the lovely speech to both of you. And I'm Salma. I'm a uh, a doctor by profession, but I'm like uh, out on out of my training, uh, doing like a leadership fellowship. I'm working with the General Medical Council at the moment, and I think my question is, um, I always personalise my questions, which is like a selfish intent. But basically, my concern as a like for women leaders are how can like you know from your personal experience, either of you, how did you feel about expressing yourself and throughout and I think expression is the problem for us as women so the bit I struggle with is even like within the family that way it starts and whether you're empowered to express yourself and then once you get into like a profession or your university and then combining who you are really and what like where you are so I'm training to be a surgeon at the moment but I think part of my concerns will be if I have a family how my team will view that like when I turn a blade because I have to drop somebody to the nursery, like what should I say? Like how they will take that? And sometimes I feel women in various part, like you know, in various professions, they try and play, like the like you know, they 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 try and be somebody else. So they try and be capable, and re like you know, reliable, and they try and work really hard. And like everybody talks about like you know working as like you know five times harder than men why like you know I should just be able to express myself as I am and be accepted for what I am like I have to say I did see the difficulty so far but I think the bit where you have to like I would love to have a family and I, that's my intention so I would like to be able to express my concerns as a woman and as a mum like within my team and within my profession happily without ha having the feeling that I can't express myself. Mm. Thank you. Mm. And this is to Farida or to... Uh, I think you go. Both of you. Okay. So do you want mm. to kick off first? Uh, yeah. You um, have your mic, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, I've heard all of that. I actually have been taught all of that, that whole like working three times as much. And But in real life, I found out that there is a formula to it. There is an incubation period. When I enter into a new job and nobody knows me there, I wait until either my first or second really big achievements and where people know what my skill sets are, what my capabilities are, and then I, by the way, you know, I want to do it this way. I, I ask for my rights. 
it's kind of like I learned that actually not even from work, but in the U.S. I found out that if I connected with people before they found out I'm Muslim, things go great because it's almost like people put a thing. They, it just tints everything that you do, right? So if the first thing you found about me was Muslim, everything I do is going to be a problem. Everything's going to be interpreted in that way. So a lot of the times I connect with people. I connect with people. They're my neighbors. We're cool. And then they enter my house and they're like, oh, you're Muslim. So it happens later on, but it doesn't change. They still like us and everything is cool. So at work, is, is, it's, a, it's kind of like a similar thing. It's not how it's supposed to be. It's not ideal, but it's also understandable. Like imagine me, Asra, I have all of this skill set. If I, I entered into a new job situation and first day I'm late to a meeting because of my son and second day I'm, uh, you know, I'm struggling because, you know, my daughter has an ear infection and, 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 it's going to ruin everything. And I'm going to sit and fight for it and express there's no need for headache in life. What I'm going to do is for the first month or two, I make sure my support system is in in amazing like line. I might ask my mom to come in. I might ask my aunt to come in. I, might, I have like a whole system just for a very known period of time. And during that period of time, I'm on time. I'm shot. I do my thing. I'm not over exerting or less but I'm doing high quality work consistently and then there comes a period where they just know you they know you they appreciate you they like you so now that hey you know Sharif has an ear infection it doesn't become an issue because they've seen what you produce so I wouldn't start off with that but I would it there will come a time when you feel like it's uh, you know so, time for it yes you have I, the mic right Hello, sorry. I understand what you're saying, a woman in medicine. And I have to say, when I was doing my PhD and I unexpectedly became pregnant, I had the most awful time. However, what I now say, and my group, we were the sort of first women 50% of medical school. What I now say, and we didn't, if you look at Jane Beryl, who has been the president, we're all in the same class, we left our children to really quite late. All right. What I would say to you now, don't worry about your career, your family is really important. If your body is telling you you should have children, you have your children. Right. Yeah. The career will always yeah, come. You're in a very privileged position. You got a fellowship, all right? Very, very few people get that. That's a huge accolade on your behalf. Everyone has a silver Athena swan, and the women's rights are enshrined in that. Go ahead, have your children. I have to echo something you said, is, you know, you don't always show your hand. So nobody knew I was Muslim, all right, head of school, sitting around the executive table. Suddenly, people said the most appalling thing about Muslim women. Then, for the first time, I said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, oh, I was another day of invisibility. Excuse me, could I have a word? And then I banged on the table and I said, as the only Muslim woman here, everyone was shocked. Mm -hmm. The place quietened down and just looked at me in utter amazement. And then I had said, I'm a Muslim woman. I find what you're saying is really despicable. I'd like you to take it back but it's words have come out of your mouth, right? I don't actually want to hear it ever again. You then have this thing that now I'm a Muslim. And so people start finding things about Muslims that are not good. Because there are things on the internet, a patient even came to me and said, you know what, we get on so well, you've looked after me for years, but can I ask you, you know, about being a Muslim. So I think it's, it's very important, and I think your strategy is one I learned a hard lesson to learn, right, over years, is that what you do. 
But I think where you are now, it's quite easy. Get pregnant, step out. You know, my niece is the same age as you. Uh, she's a crick fellow doing a PhD. She's had two babies. They have to give you the time off. That's enshrined in law now. That doesn't make you a lesser person. That doesn't mean when you come back, you're not able to do your job. You know, those days where somebody said, sign this form, all right, you've had a baby, you're going to leave my uh, group. They can't do that anymore. So firstly, you have rights. Secondly, there's a time and you've got a biological clock. So have your baby. And thirdly, also, I, I always learned that you have some sort of strategy. If that door closes, what other door would you like to be opened and work towards it? I think, I think that's the most important thing I can say to you. But I know where you are being there. Good afternoon. My name is Victoria Inyama. Um, I've just graduated from this university. But before then, I am a Nigerian actress. And I do try to use my voice. It always gets me into trouble, especially with my government. <laughs> but I do try. But my biggest problem is how do I change the mind herself and to trust in her continue to leave her children like she was brought up to be quiet not just respect authorities and don't change it if it's wrong even if it's against you just ask for the sake of peace and carry on how and and they wouldn't even support a typical African woman who is out there making a difference. I get judged. I get bashed. I get all sorts. I, because I'm an actress, I'm a prostitute. And because I have much. And these are people you're trying to defend. You're trying to defend them. This, you have a voice. They just refuse. It's so frustrating. And a lot of them would actually be grabbed school. A lot of them are medical doctors. They don't work. They don't, they, they, just, they will tell you religion. The Bible says a woman should stay at home. And they are not making They are so, the typical Nigerian woman, I don't even know about Africa, but the typical, she is so accepting of anything, anything. She, she can't even object to. Sadly, I've, I've experienced domestic violence. I take domestic violence so passionately. I try to talk to them. I try to. And they tell me, I stay for the children. I can't fight him. I don't have money. I don't work. I'd rather die. And they do die. And they would never talk. Even in England here, they would not report to the police. They would tell you the police do not protect them, which is true to an extent. We have that. And I take it on a lot of times. But they just wouldn't change. Yep. It's difficult. Okay, so uh, it's difficult for a man to respond to this question because he <laughs> cannot uh, possibly understand the nuances of it all. But having worked uh, as the gender equality officer within the UN and having worked very closely with uh, colleagues, can I just say that as much as it's difficult for us to notice it, there is significant change in terms of uh, women's expectations and their responses at this point of time. And you're part of that change. So uh, why do we use human rights? Is because we, we help women self-organize and understand that they have these rights that on one hand there might be a little bit of um, pushing back or the restriction that there. But women, I think your real point happens to be why is it not happening fast enough and why isn't it all happening like it should? That's a matter of putting things back on, uh, on track and so on. But I'll, I'll ask the real uh, speakers yeah. who are hands But I on don't it. think it's only Nigerian women. Yeah. Okay. It's women everywhere, right? Not African, not European, not wherever. It's women, right? However, you will make a change and you have made a change because your 
generation and the next generation are listening, are living different lives. Right. Sometimes it's so painful because you feel like you're just hitting your head against a wall. Right. There are some things in your community that you can only change by example. And even when people are protesting very loudly, you planted a seed in there. So don't feel so despondent because the little seeds grow into big trees. And one day when you're as old as the people or your generation you're complaining about, you, you will see that all of the rest have, have changed. And they have a different expectation now, right? Whatever their parents are thinking, this new generation, the millenniums and everyone else, are different. Um, if I may also like add, um, there is it's it's like a cycle. So I think like a lot of the times, uh, we 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 combine the whole acceptance with the doing something about it to, and the speaking up as a package. But I think right now what's happening across the world, because it's a more globalized world, and because of the internet, and because of the availability of information, there is a lot of information reaching a lot of people, sometimes not the right one. But there will come a point of like saturation. So what happens in a community mm -hmm. is that you need to saturate it with information. And at some point, there happens to be like a little bit of a change where people might not accept the thing, but it don't feel safe to do something about it. And then comes the phase of they don't accept it. They teach their children not to accept it, but not necessarily that it's safe to answer back to authority out of protecting your child. Like, don't talk back to the police, don't whatever, but this is not right. And then comes the, the, the part where there, when a whole society of people don't accept something, an overhaul comes. So in every community or in every place, like or globally right now with the millennials, there is this saturation because of information. It's the day and age of information. There's lots of information coming of like gender-based violence is not okay, this is not okay, this is not okay. There's TED, TEDx talks, there's everything is accessible. So hopefully over time there happens to be a higher level of saturation and higher level of role models and examples where they come in touch with them uh, via via uh, you know the internet or whatever then hopefully it happens gradually but of course we want it now and we want it like right the second and some of us are blessed like you're blessed to go from here to here but some people in some societies it takes it's, it's a journey it's a little bit of a journey Okay, I know you all keep because lunch is coming, but I will give last uh, feedback because she's going to give us some reflection from Saudi Arabian perspective. Here we go. Introduce yourself. I'm just because I think you all keep, uh, start getting <laughs> hungry uh, now. <laughs> I'm Dr. Ilham, Ilham Mustafa Abu Bakr, uh, psychotherapist, PhD. Uh, I don't think I can speak. English fluently, so I can speak maybe in Arabic, and Isra will translate or my, uh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> but long time I didn't talk in English. 30 years I'm talking in Arabic and uh, do my, <laughs> so, um, for uh, Saudi, uh, it is a, uh, third year um, between Saudi uh, uh, community and I think yani, when I heard this about uh, human rights I can, for our uh, work, psychological work, when one comes to you he is really is stuck or um, lost when, he, when one seeks um, oh, sorry. <laughs> طيب. لما يجيك الواحد خلاص هو اللي translate for me. You can do it for me. Yeah. لما الواحد يجي العيادة النفسية هو بيكون stuck or uh, lost. المشكلة أنت بتعالج 
uh, you are going to give uh, treatment يعني you have to as she said يعني you have to uh, في CBT في cognitive behavioral therapy في so many things but uh, the environmental uh, يعني maybe he Oh. You can say one, طيب, one طيب, sentence طيب. in Arabic أحسن. and I can raise it right away if you want and take it slowly. <تصفيق> طيب yeah. ايوه لما يجي المريض في في العياده النفسيه والمشكله يعني في السعوديه ناو اكثر المشاكل هي مشاكل الريليشن شيب. So mostly in Saudi Arabia most problems at the moment rotate around relationships. About في 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 العلاقات وبالفعل في Uh, يعني ممكن نقول انه في ديستركتيف نارسيسيستيك باترن سواء كان من الزوج او من حتى الاولاد يعني في مشكله كبيره جدا الان في المجتمع السعودي. Yeah, at the moment she notices that um, the narcissistic uh, patterns, the narcissistic disorder patterns are very um, present whether it's in husbands or in children or in whoever it is in the family and it's a pattern that's being passed on i think yeah wa hadi al mushkila haqiqa musabbibat lana yani yani mushkila kabira fi 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 al iyadat al nafsiya lanu juzu minha law kanu hum bi'rifu al human rights aw bitadkhul fi al karshar bitaatum kan sa'adatum katir jidda Yeah, she said uh, also that if they only uh, knew more about human rights and the knowledge that comes with uh, human rights, it would have helped them very much tackle those issues and um, evolve in their culture. Yeah. 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 هي خدمة بتتكون في انه كيف تغير الافكار وكيف تغير المشاعر وكيف تغير اللي هو ايش المشاعر والافكار والسلوك. Yeah. Uh, and from a psychological uh, perspective and, and a point of work, it's how to change your thoughts, how to uh, also be aware and change your emotions, and then how to then change your behavior. لكن لما انت تشوف الاستريسرز is someone living with you. Ah, this is English. Huh? <laughs> It is something psychological. Huh? <laughs> <تصفيق> طيب لما تشوف احد انت عاوز تعالج احد وبعدين اراوند هيم مشكلته انه احد معاك طول الوقت ستريسرز ان وما ممكن انت يعني تزيح هذا الشخص دو يو ثينك عمليه العلاج النفسي كيف تتاثر <تصفيق> 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 Uh, to uh, help this person, but then if this person is in an environment where there are stressors around this person, actually affecting this person are really strong and there, and as a psychotherapist, you cannot remove those influences from their environment, then it really uh, challenges uh, your job as a psychotherapist. طيب المشكلة هنا حقيقة أثرت على نوعية الأمراض النفسية. يعني الآن أنت ممكن تقولي في PTSD. وفي كومبلكس تروما ودائما تخلي الامراض النفسيه كرونيك فسببت مشكله كبيره يعني هذه الظروف اللي انا قلتها قبل شوي كان يو سي ات اجين بس لانه ما فهمت عليك شو قصدك آه. طيب آه آه ال- ال- الوضع ال- ال- الحالي اللي انا قلته انه خلت طبيعه الامراض النفسيه المتواجده في السعوديه لانه هي دائما فيها تروما باوند وفيها اتاتشمنت بوند وسمثينج لايك ذات فبقت من طبيعه الامراض اللي فيها الكومبلكس تروما والبي تي اس دي من كثره الاحداث اللي بيتعرضوا لها من الدومستيك فايولنس يا Uh, yeah, and the nature and what uh, of the uh, culture in Saudi Arabia and the uh, frequent domestic violence incidents, uh, therefore, um, now presents us with lots of PTSD cases, lots of cases that has to have to do with uh, trauma bond and complex trauma. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they were. Did you want to say something? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is increasing in all societies, all right? And it is just as complex in uh, the society here as it is in, um, in Saudi, yeah. Uh, any any yeah, brief comments sure. before we go for lunch? It's just being self-centered, I think, and narcissism is like, you know, the extreme of it. And I think it's among men and women. Does that make sense? Well, I think it's in everyone, yeah. actually. Yeah. And, and it's becoming, if you look at narcissism in a, as a psychological trait, which is what she's talking about, if you look at the increase in all societies um, and Western ones, it's it's exactly the same actually. so we're just being more aware of ourselves i think so like oh, we're more aware of others behavior rather than accepting it as the norm we're not that's the problem mm. okay any final comments before we wrap this up can i just request yes, that you yes. share can, take, take the mic yeah. Yeah. can you share the website again where to download uh, yeah. resources that's oh right. yes yes take the, do you, do you do, ah, the website will share yes my name is tahid Ahmad. And I'm a law student from University of East London. I belong to East London as well. Uh, this is a question, actually, for all of you, <laughs> you guys. I appreciate the slides, everything, and effort this university made to create awareness. Uh, my question is, is any, you know, sometimes we got the qualities or we want to portray our uh, eligibilities or anything, but we don't know exactly exactly the the uh, platform like where we can deliver our uh, to uh, to make difference in the society or make difference or uh, for the development of women so i would really like to ask all of you is any if any platform we can go if someone have extra time to spend there voluntarily because i know myself uh, in England, I whenever I wanted to be a volunteer, it's always hard. It's not easy if you are like uh, uh, giving your time without like uh, expecting any pay or anything. It's not even easy to get any volunteer work. So, if any platform from the University of East London for development of women for in any prospect uh, in human rights, like I am a law student, I can obviously. Um, do something for the people, for the community. So I really I exactly don't know where to go to, to uh, if I have got now, uh, I'm free um, uh, for my next term. It's been two months I'm available. So I don't know really where to go. So, to so first of all, <laughs> thank you so much for turning up yeah. and also for your commitment. Uh, you have various people over here, both inside the university, that's Professor Alam and myself. Yeah. We'd be happy to welcome your inputs in ways in which you think is best serves, but also as the opportunity comes. But I think that's, this is also both a forum. So on one hand, the work that you do in terms of generating your research, evidence-based thinking, that's important. The second one is mobilization, which is what you're talking about, uh, engaging. Third one, what we are doing today is trying to kind of build that common ground and understanding of how we can move forward in the country. Yeah, so we'll be in touch with you. Yeah, Thank you very much. It is appreciatable, like the slides and everything. But the main thing is practically we should do something mm. even for Nigerian women, for my background, I'm mean, Asian women yeah. from Pakistan. There's a lot to do practically. And I appreciate if we get a bit chance, if someone can put a little bit effort towards that, that sure. will be appreciated more than, the, obviously, I appreciate the everything you putting at the moment. Hi, my name is Zainab. Um, I am a pediatric nurse at the moment and also doing my master's at UEL for international development and NGO management. Um, I just, this question is really for Esra. I just wanted to ask, um, after being somebody who worked into the admin after finishing their master's, which is sort of almost where I'm at, would you still recommend starting with the admin and finding out like the ins and outs of an organization? Would you still recommend that as like a starting point? That's really my mm. question. Okay. And I think there is just one last question here. This is the last question. It's for you. Um, hi, my name's Rashida. Um, I'm a graduate from UEL. Um, I've I came to the last conference um, where we had um, Dimitri talk about uh, research findings um, based on all of the different activities that have been done from since 2009 till present. Um, in one of your um, slides, um, Professor Suraj, you mentioned something about capacity and um, gap, gen uh, gap 
gap analysis. Something, I can't remember what it is. Analysis. Gap, gap analysis. analysis. Okay, um, so what I'm trying to get at is that there's a lot of analysis, there's a lot of research that has gone into um, what's happening with women and gender and issues around it. Um, but what, what, what um, is actually going to be implemented, what is actually being implemented, there's all the findings, there's all the analysis, but what's being implemented? And also, um, you still have to deal with the prejudice from women and the prejudice from men when you rise up and you go to higher levels, whether you have your qualifications, PhD, etc. You still have um, struggles that women experience when they do get their education. And, and I've been in dialogue back and forth with someone that's in Saudi Arabia who just said to me that at the end of the day the scholars have said that women don't need to worry about getting the education because there will always be someone. Women don't need to be worried about becoming nurses and doctors because there will always be someone to do it for them. So there is still that mindset and, and there is still that issue and that struggle. So even though we have women that are qualified and that are um, educated um, and that are at their top level of the game, they still experience struggle. So how are you, how are you um, proposing to deal with that, with the SDGs and everything else? You know, what, what's, what sort of things are you dealing with there in terms of capacity and in terms of gaps, you know, the pay gap, all of that? It's still an issue. It's recognised. It's known. You know, it, we've been talking about it for so many years. What's being done about it? So let, 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 let me start off with that, but I'm sure we'll draw other people in and what is going to be our most important but final dialogue. So we are really looking at best practices because there are women on the ground through the leadership that are making significant changes. I mean, uh, so that's one part of it. But you identified, as others have identified, two basic issues. One is how do we change mindsets? And second is how do we move forward? And the link for that happens to be that le your question is what is called a so what question. We carry out these analysis, but it's having that kind of column. So this human rights based approach is being used right across as a sort of a checklist. So do we find out, let, let's assume that our group is going to get together and we find out, you know, the professionals over here, the civil society over there. I mean, uh, they might be financial, human resources. When you identify the gaps in order to lead a campaign or to try to solve a problem, what are those gaps that is there? And then we try to generate through that the capacities and etc. So yes, so please come forward and help us in this. It's a collective endeavor. And I can talk, for example, in terms of Saudi Arabia, where women have actually seized the opportunity. It's not been easy. We, we know that. But if you see, I mean, going back to Saudi Arabia, I carried out an evaluation of what is called their uh, Future Saudi Cities program. Within a year of going back, I mean, things had transformed itself. So there is change taking place in so many parts of the world. So I think this is the beginning. Let's not uh, overstate what we're doing today. This was a very helpful dialogue, exchange of ideas. But we'll be in touch with you and take that forward. And I look for our uh, leaders among you and our speakers to do the same. Okay. I'm afraid uh, lunch Would begins. Would I be able to uh, answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there are two quick questions and then we go around for... And I also didn't answer the question before the one that was asked. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, go ahead, yeah. Go ahead. So just to answer your question about uh, that's where you are right now in terms of like admin work and, and, and stuff like that. I truly 100% believe that I think like right now in this world there's, there, there's about like two pathways, all right? One of them is to be, to know everything about a thing, right? You know everything about this electron, everything. You write 35 papers about it, you know all of this. You will actually go up that ranks very quickly. You would, you would present about it, you will be known for being an expert in that field. This is a great, very focused field. It works with some people. There is another pathway which is having lots of cards. If you're a type of person that you just don't know where you're going to be tomorrow and stuff like that. You need lots of cards to play with. So over, over time, like you just need to be conscious about why are you doing what you're doing right now. And it's not like I just landed here and I'm unhappy here and you're focused on that. If you know that you're in there to gain certain skill sets, then you will be in there to gain those skill sets and you will leave when you gain those skill sets to add it to your collage of skill sets that you have. Like, um, 
When I was at PA PAI, I learned about policy. I learned about advocacy uh, when I went to APA. And I learned about also like uh, fundraising in nonprofits, Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, 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 HP, Howard Packer, all of these. When I went into APA, I learned about the NIH system, uh, about the US government granting systems. I learned about mentorships, uh, uh, mentoring. Uh, uh, and each place, like right now in the job that I'm in, I'm all about data, data and analytics, data science. I'm learning R, I'm learning Python, I'm learning Panda. I'm learning all of these different things. My background is in public health. When I was in public health, uh, I learned SPSS. It's probably outdated right now. Like, nobody uses it now, right? People are using Tableau and lots of different things. I'm, in order for me to become always, uh, as they say in Arabic, muakib, you have to continue to be competitive enough and, and have that in addition to your knowledge. And also, admin skills and interpersonal skills, in addition to knowledge, makes you a very powerful candidate. Like if you're someone who has lots of knowledge, but you can't present and you can't really write a report that's proper, you're less competitive than someone who has the knowledge, is relatable, is accessible, and can actually write reports and spit out data and can do all of these other admin stuff. So just. There is value, there is lots of value in having all of these admin skill sets. Just be conscious of what it is and, you know, add from there. Do you have any? And I think basically there is learning in everything that you do, right? And sometimes you're doing things and you don't want to be there, but actually do the best you can. So whenever you're doing something, be the best you can in whatever. And you will use that for something else. Never feel sorry for yourself. When, it's, when you're down, say, what is the learning in here for me? And can I make the best of it? Yeah. And sometimes that means that you have to work twice as harder uh, than others because you're a woman of uh, you know, particular ethnicity and other things. But if you just recognize that yeah. A, the obstacles are there and that you can overcome and you will overcome, that gives you a further, because you have something that nobody else has. Mm. And that is the will not only to succeed, to, but to have a meaningful you know, uh, progress forward. Yeah. So I never ever got a job, right? Except I was offered a job because I had skills that other people didn't have. Mm -hmm. So people would identify that I had something that they needed and offer me a job. And I think when you are a disadvantaged group of people, especially in this country, what you want to do is to do the best you can, whatever you're doing, and add on to it. So when she was doing the admin job, she was learning all sorts of things. And whatever you do, you know, you're learning communication skills, you're learning huge amount of things about people, the psychology of how people interact, work, whatever. The next job you do, and it's valuable, all right? Don't denigrate any job that you do. Mm -hmm. I, I was saying, you know, because I wanted to do medicine, I was sitting in the lavatory and doing my work in the evening because that was the warmest place because I didn't have money to heat my room. But it didn't matter because I knew I was gaining valuable information and skills which I could use. So it doesn't matter what you do, you learn a lot. And you said you have a quick one, right? Yeah, um, my question is, um, because when I look at the slides and everything, it's always talking about empowering the Muslim women. Is this program all about Muslim women? What about those that are not Muslims? So, uh, could I just respond to that? So, I don't think I use the word Muslim today. But, uh, but whenever we look at women's uh, empowerment, we need to recognize that sometimes religion plays a very important role. And uh, I think you mentioned that also. Uh, so, you have faith-based approaches in uh, various countries, various contexts, yeah. that both look at faith as a positive uh, force, which women themselves choose to have, and sometimes 
interpretations by mostly men which tend to keep women down so the injurious practices so yes culture and um, if you know faith is an additional dimension but I think a point that has been made right across is the challenges that women face in terms of reaching their potential in terms of getting collective development are sort of in some ways quite generic how in a particular country or how in a particular community group you engage with it could differ so the answer to your question is uh, in our center we have worked a lot with Muslim women but on the other hand uh, equally uh, women of all uh, dimensions as well as uh, you know identities. Yeah. Uh, I went to Church of England school amazing I have family of every single religion you can think of and everyone has a value and all streams flow into the same river what I would say to you and African men would hate this doesn't matter if you white green blue black or orange or if you're Christian Muslim Hindu Zoroastrian uh, born again right they all think the same and so all these issues that have been discussed here today are generic has got nothing to do with any religion it's got to do this hugely inbuilt power relationship so as amazing as my father was I had this conversation for, with him he died when he was 95 92 daddy you know you had all these girls and they we've all done all these things and um, it says that you know when you die you're not male or female so does not that mean we're equal what do you think so with all these women in your family what do you think about male or females he goes yeah Farida after a long think I think you're right but you know men are just as bad better than women <laughs> They cannot get their minds. They cannot get their minds. And I think it will take more than one generation for men in Africa, who I know better than men anywhere, to have that uh, change of view of women. So what we're talking about, it's got nothing to do with religion. I, I, I know we're running out of time, but I might just respond to that. So sometimes in some communities, they believe that man has a daraja, a degree. Yeah which is higher than a woman. Now, some of the work that various women are doing across the world is to say that that was contingent upon the male being, let's say, the breadwinner or having more yeah. access and responsibility. That has changed right now. Yeah. So, like, gender itself is socially constructed. Yeah. Even the understanding of religion yeah. moves all the time. Yeah. So that's why we say Muamalat yeah. rather than a question. Uh, There's not a matter of religion. There's a matter of society moving on. And that's what we're seeing yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.